Burrow length feet per second. Coming up on Everhart Protection. to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, all fans of everything firearms, as always, always practice safety, always think of everyone and think of all of your surroundings when dealing with firearms. Got a good one for you today where we're going to discuss the difference in velocity from different girl lengths. Kind of sort of with different platforms, just to kind of go over it a little bit, but more so, uh, we're going to talk about 5.56. Five, versus 7.62 by 39, a kind of comparison with the different lengths of barrels. Jumping right into it, we know uh, the 5.56 cartridge designed around a longer barrel. We're talking 20 inches and up, 24 inch barrels, 26 inch barrels. So a lot of the times when you see the information on the 5.56 cartridge, you're looking at information from that standpoint, how it was created. The manufacturers will have information on their boxes, on their containers, or their websites. And a lot of times that information will be from a 16 inch barrel. That's more of your average, what you see from your everyday custom. So typically 5.56 five, you get around, right around, give or take 3,000 feet per second. The heavier round will be a little bit slower. M855, 62 grain. About 29, a little over 2,900, and a lighter 55 grain, 193, 31, 3,200 average. Now, you do have a lot of different variations when you talk about what could be the difference, what could be causing different feet per second from the same firearm, and that comes down to ammo brand, the case type, the firearm type, temperature of the ammo, and your ambient temperature outside as well, and various other atmospheric conditions can cause a difference in your uh, velocity. On average, really looking at 16 inch barrels as your, your top end. Now, if you're going into the, the longer barrels where the 5.56 five, was really developed, or 2.23 and 5.56 five, five, was, was really developed, you're talking about 3,300, 3,200, 3,400 feet per second. And that thing is really, really moving at that point. Don't get me wrong, at the 16 inch barrel length, it's still really moving at an extremely high rate of speed and it's a lot of the uh, ammo now will be designed around that 16 inch barrel kind of so in mind. Some manufacturers are kind of getting into the shorter side of things so they're using faster burning powders. If, with the longer barrel you still will have more velocity. I mean, it is what it is. It's simple physics. So you have a more significant drop with 5.56 five, between the different lengths of barrels and that can be from an inch to two inches to a half an inch. There's a significant drop with 5.56 five, and 2.23 two, than it is with 7.62 by 39. That being said, the 5.56 five, round is still moving amazingly fast. And the crazy thing is out of the shorter barrels, like a 10 inch barrel, 5.56 five, will still be moving just as fast, if not faster, give or take, than 7.62 by 39 out of a 16 inch barrel, full size AK, full size AR. So that's something to actually think about. Even though you still have a much heavier round moving at that same rate of speed, and like I said, if you're comparing a 10 inch barrel to a 16 inch barrel at that point, it's just to kind of show the difference in speed that these rounds are moving. Ideally, I believe a lot of guys kind of think the 14 and a half inch barrel is your ideal range for all things considered with the 5.56 and 12.5, typically with the 7.62 by 39. I know the Romanian uh, pistols, AK pistols, are 12.5 and the American versions are 10.5. So you do have a two inch difference right there from, for example, the American Draco, as you see right in front of you, that's a 10 five. And the Romanian, it's Romanian counterpart, same company, same everything, it's just American built versus Romanian built and imported versus uh, imported parts and built in America with American parts added to make it fit 
NFA or whatever it is, it, it may be about foreign firearms being imported. It uh has a shorter barrel. And that has nothing to do whatsoever with being American or anything of that sort. It's just for some reason they went with the 10 inch barrel over the 12 inch barrel with the American design. Now that's something I actually would like to look into to find out why they did that. But it, on the uh, from the 16 inch to I uh, say maybe the 12, five, you're losing about 300 to 250 to 350 maybe feet per second out of the 556 and out of the uh, 762 by 39 you're roughly losing well you're less less than 100 feet per second somewhere in there 100 feet per second but typically less than 100 feet per second and for a four inch difference or three and a half inch difference however you want to slice it a pretty significant advantage for 7.62 by 39 you have a much more compact firearm and you still have a lot of the full impact that this round is capable of. You have a much bigger difference with 5.56 than you do with 7.62 by 39 with every difference in uh, length of that barrel. So I mean even with a, a 12.5 going to a 11.5 you still lose almost another 100 feet per second out of 5.56. 7.62 by 39 it may lose 50 feet per second in that range, give or take, it's really not that much. And if, if you want to look at an even bigger jump, like a 10.5 from a 16 inch, you're losing about 400 to 500 feet per second, depending on your round and, and the type of firearm you're using. And you know, a few other various things, but 400 to 500 feet per second from a 16 inch to a 10 and a half inch or 10 inch out of 5.56 versus 7.62, where you're losing roughly 200 feet per second. It's getting this full powder burn pretty much. It's just not building up its full speed, but it's not losing as much speed, which, like I said, all things considered, that's that's great. Again, the 5.56, five, this round is still moving incredibly fast, so you're still going to get a lot of damage out of it in closer ranges. When you start to extend that range, that's when you will have a bigger difference. Even with the 7.62 by 39, that 200 feet per second will make a huge difference on that round when you start to extend the range, the distance where your target may be. And we all know the, the shorter barrels are really popular. A seven inch barrel, five, five, six, you're looking at about 21, 35, 2400 between a, a 62 grain and a 55 grain. Still moving fast, but at that point you've lost over a thousand feet per second out of that round when you're talking about 26 inch barrel going down to a seven inch, seven and a half inch barrel thousand feet per second. The round is still moving fast, but you won't have a lot of the fringe effect. The hollow point still will act right, but you won't have as much penetration with that round as you would have if it really gained at least 800 feet per second, because from a 7 inch to a 16 inch, you're losing about 700 feet per second. And that's still pretty significant. And with the 7.62 by 39, you're only losing about, I'd say 400 to 475. Again, depending on your ammo type and various other con conditions. But again, much more feet per second loss out of 5.56 five, for every difference, for the same difference, I'll say, in barrel length than you have out of 7.62 by 39. So out of short barrels, it would be the obvious choice that 7.62 by 39 is a much better option. Not saying that 5.56 five, won't still be effective, but again, at long ranges, you lose a lot of that ability. The answer to 7.62 by 39 completely blowing 5.56 five, out of the water with short barrel performance versus long barrel performance is the 300 blackout. It was specifically designed around a nine inch barrel, so it gets complete powder burn with the short barrels. It was designed to be subsonic naturally, and as we all know, usually when you're going 300 blackout, you, the ultimate goal is to go suppressed. And I, I believe with all, when all people get into shooting, at some point they would like to have something suppressed just to see what it's really like. It's not the Hollywood effect where it's tap, 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 tap. There are some firearms that can be incredibly quiet if you match them up with the right type of ammo and the right suppressor. Again, another subject, 
But that does, like, barrel length is really important when you're looking at uh, using suppressors also. Again, that's another uh, subject, but that's a video I will do on, uh, do, do something on in the future because it sounds like a pretty good subject, barrel length versus suppressor versus your caliber. All right, well, I'll wrap this one up really quick. It went a little longer than I thought. I think I covered everything I pretty much wanted to cover. So enjoy the rest of your day. Check out the other videos. I just dropped a recent video. And until next time, be safe and take care of yourself and your surroundings.